Hello everyone, this is Dr. Todd May again with another how-to video for undergraduate students and this one is on how to avoid plagiarism. I do realize that there are some technological tools to help students identify whether or not an essay they are about to submit contains plagiarism, but what's really important is to know that that technology is a backstop. It's not really going to solve an issue or an underlying issue if a student doesn't know how to incorporate sources within an essay. So that's what this video is all about. Let's get started. Here's an outline for the video. We're going to look at the basic idea of plagiarism, what the difference is between originality and the demonstration of knowledge, how to use general attribution when citing sources, and how to incorporate quotes. What is plagiarism? Let's think about the basic idea of plagiarism in terms of action and role. Action in terms of what is the act of plagiarizing and the role, the plagiarizer or the person who potentially could be liable to plagiarism. I think we'll get a better idea of what's involved in plagiarism after looking at these two features. So the action of plagiarizing is simply taking credit for an idea, thought, or insight when that idea, thought, or insight is not yours. And you could argue or be a bit difficult and say, well, nothing is really mine. I, you know, my knowledge is the accumulation of listening to others and seeing others and reading examples and hearing stories. So really, what is really mine? Well, to help get a better sense of why plagiarism matters in certain spheres or environments, let's think about the role of the speaker or the writer. So you are in a role or position of authority or expertise on whose analysis or advice public and professional awareness depends. So we're thinking about a very specific role, you're an authoritative or expert position and others who are not authorities or experts are relying on you for accuracy of information. So because of that, you're in a position of knowledge and one of the rules of being in a position of knowledge is that you're transparent about where your knowledge comes from. So that may or may not apply to a student. If you're a, a postgraduate, you're a student, as well as sometimes when you speak, you are in a position of authority or expertise because when you're doing your PhD, you're often one of the few people who knows expertly about that particular area. But as an undergraduate student, that's probably not gonna be the case. So let's think of that role also in terms of a role of education where you're giving an account of accurate or you're giving an account on, uh, which relies on accuracy of information, history, and argument. So in other words, being, in, being a student is being within the institution of education. And as a member of that institution, there are certain responsibilities you're held accountable for. And that, of course, is accuracy and transparency of information. You can't just say something without giving credit to the long history of students and thinkers and teachers that have come before you, done the work, and have articulated these ideas, so you have to cite these ideas. And it's really important to understand that plagiarism is trying to give credit to the work that's already been done. One of the things I've encountered as a teacher has done quite a bit of work on plagiarism with students is the worry that a student has to be original when responding to an essay question. They have to come up with something that no other student has thought about before. And so they feel this pressure to try and find that in the research they do. Of course, the temptation is that they find something that's original and maybe unawaringly or awaringly appropriate that insight from the source and claim that insight as their own because it's, a, it's an original insight. And so that, this idea that you have to be original in an essay is something that complicates the process of writing for undergraduate students. So the idea here is to get undergraduate students not even to worry about the originality of an argument in response to an essay question. So it might be mentioned uh, when, you, when you go to workshops about writing that you have to be original. What they're really saying is that they want you to be able to think things out for yourself by engaging with the appropriate sources related to a question. It doesn't mean you have to have an original view. An original view or an original contribution to the field of scholarship is something that's not really expected until you're at the MA uh, but certainly the PhD level. So again, for undergraduate students, you don't have to express an original argument. You have to express ideas and thoughts that are yours in relation to the research you're doing. So the aim of an undergraduate essay, it's better to think about that aim as 
demonstrating your knowledge by demonstrating your work. So what I mean by that is when you do your research, you're going to demonstrate you've done the research. And the way you demonstrate you've done the research is when you write your essay, you make references to the sources that you've read and found directly relevant to the topic you're addressing. And that's demonstrating your work. So demonstrating your work is quoting and citing, and we'll get into that in just a moment. Okay, so just to recap, demonstrating knowledge, showing you have, you, you have researched the topic by citing experts. And to also remember that actually citing experts, although it requires a lot of work and doing the research and understanding the articles and books you're reading, when you're actually writing the essay and you've made notes about the quotations and passages you want to use and answering the essay question, in writing the essay, that is actually the path of least resistance because you simply have to refer to the quotes and the sources in an appropriate way and in a compelling way, uh, rather than opposed to the idea that if you try to take someone's original insight and appropriate it unethically as your own, in other words, if you plagiarize and you take another's insight and you state it as your own, that is not the path of least resistance because while you've stated that original idea and claimed it yours, you haven't supported it. So you'll have to do the work to support that that idea. Whereas when you cite the expert, that citation to the expert is in effect supporting the view because that person is an expert. I'll say more about this in the final example that we look at in the video, but for now, let's continue on. General attribution is also referred to as indirect quotation. So in this instance, I'm going to take a quote from a philosopher who is looking at Thomas Hobbes's phrase, a war of all against all. And the war of all against all has tend to be understood as Hobbes describing a state of nature in which humans are, are constantly fighting each other. But Kafka wants to make the point that it's not about that. It's actually about something else. And this is an original insight. So if I were going to plagiarize this, I would just take Kafka's point and say it were my own. But I'm not. And in this instance, I'm going to uh, do an indirect quote or general attribution of Kafka. So there's the quote for you. I'm not going to read it out loud if you want to read it. Uh, for yourself, you can pause the video. But the general attribution might go something like this. I'm writing an essay and I would phrase or incorporate the quote generally in this way. It would be easy to assume that the meaning of Hobbes's phrase of war of all against all refers to a constant state of warring between individuals. But according to Gregory Kafka, its meaning is really about how each individual is disposed towards a willingness to fight another. This is important because and I would provide some explanation to give a better indication of the significance of Kafka's point. So what's important to notice about this general or indirect attribution is that I'm paraphrasing in my own words, Kafka's idea, argument, or insight. And I'm also providing a reference to Gregory Kafka's text uh, according to what's often referred to as the Harvard citation style, but it's also known as the inline or in-text citation. So I state the name of the author, provide the date of the publication and the page from which I'm taking the idea or insight. So I paraphrase and then I refer to the author's name and provide the specific page citation in parentheses. So that's indirect or general attribution. This works really well when you can paraphrase the quotation you want to use. There will be instances when you can't paraphrase the quotation and that will require a direct quote. So there's a lot more to, set, to be said about the art of quoting and how to incorporate quotes in an essay. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but of course, if you have any questions, you can contact me directly via my website at philosophy2.com. I also offer philosophical coaching classes specifically aimed at undergraduate students. You can check out the coaching page of my website and see that there's a special rate for students that's not as costly as the others. Contact me. I have a lot to offer. I have over 16 years of experience of teaching and research at the university level in philosophy, but I also taught a lot of writing workshops and how to avoid plagiarism workshops at university level. Okay, let's look at direct quotation or incorporating quotes directly into a text. So here's how the direct quotation will read in the body of an essay, or at least how I might write it. But what does Hobbes really mean by a war of all against all when describing a state of nature? Does he mean that humans and their natural habitat are always fighting one another? Not according to Gregory Kafka, who notes, quote, 
A war of all against all is a state in which each knows that every other is willing to fight him, not one in which each is constantly fighting, end quote. Kafka's point is not inconsequential since the instability of a state of nature does not actually lie in the violence done between individuals, but rather in the constant threat that there may be such violence. This threat undermines any possibility of social cohesion. So notice what the direct quotation of the passage does differently from the indirect quote. The direct quote actually gives me a little bit more material to dissect, analyze, and explain. So hopefully the consequence of that is the essay I'm writing becomes a bit more compelling because I'm digging into the details of the quote. I'm explaining what the quote means and what this is doing in the eyes of the person marking the essay is it's demonstrating your knowledge. It's demonstrating that you've thought about things and that you've done the work. So demonstrating knowledge, demonstrating that you've done the work. And it's great because if you identify that there's a quote that you should use because it's important and it expresses or communicates something central to the argument of the essay you're writing, in a draft of an essay, you may not fully grasp the significance or gravity of that quote, but because you've been able to identify that's what you need to include in subsequent redrafts or rewrites of the essay, you may find that your understanding of that quote has changed and you can rewrite the explanatory bit afterwards or the part that's providing the analysis and exp explanation to convince the reader of the essay that you understand what's going on with that quote and why it matters. So again, demonstrating your work, demonstrating your knowledge. Okay, and last is always an example of what not to do. In this case, this is plagiarism. So uh, in the red is the plagiarized bit from the Kafka quote, and uh, the rest of it is going to be my own words, or actually I'm trying to, uh, assuming a kind of nefarious intention, I've actually tried to manipulate the original quote and insert different words so that perhaps the reader doesn't detect that it's a quote from Gregory Kafka. But a, a, an example of what not to do or plagiarism would go something like this. What Hobbes really means by a war of all against all is a state in which each individual knows that every other person is willing to fight him. Its meaning is not one in which each is constantly fighting the other. So I'm not attributed to Kafka. I've claimed it as my, I'm my own. So I'm obviously plagiarizing. I'm pretending to offer an original argument, but also notice that notwithstanding that breach of ethics, notwithstanding the fact that I've committed plagiarism, I still need to support that interpretation of the passage in question. So in other words, I'm claiming this as my original idea, but I don't have anything to refer to to support it. I've simply plagiarized Kafka and taken the idea as my own. Whereas when we indirectly quote Kafka or directly quote him, as we saw in the previous examples, I'm, I actually have him as an authority to cite, so I don't have to support the idea. I'm actually referring to him, Kafka, who's done all the work. And then, as we noticed, it's particularly in the last bit where I directly quoted the passage, I can then explain the significance of, the, of Gregory Kafka's insight. So that's the path of least resistance I referred to at the beginning. I don't have to support the original idea in plagiarizing. If I've attributed something correctly, I'm inciting the expert that's already done most of the work for me. And all that remains is that I have to explain the significance of the passage I am quoting. So by quoting Kafka properly, I provide support by virtue of citing an expert, and then I can strengthen the argument by explaining Kafka's rationale and perhaps the implications of his view. And as I said, all that is the path of least resistance and I'm demonstrating my knowledge and grasp of the scholarship relevant to answering the essay question. So if you have any questions, please do visit my website at philosophy2.com and please do check out the blogs, the videos, and also the coaching page if you'd like to seek further assistance and draw on my years of experience and knowledge. That's it for now. I wish you the best in writing your philosophy essays or your humanities essays. And again, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to get in touch. Take care.